Our uh, other two commissioners will be joining us um, soon, I think. Uh, our invocation today will be delivered by Minister Coleman Ford from the Village Church in South Lake, Texas. After the invocation, please remain standing for our pledges. Again, thank you for being here today. Thank you, Judge Whitley. Let me begin by just reading a short excerpt from God's Word, Psalm 112. Praise the Lord. Blessed is the man who fears the Lord, who greatly delights in his commandments. His offspring will be mighty in the land. The generation of the upright will be blessed. Wealth and riches are in his house, and his righteousness endures forever. Light dawns in the darkness for the upright. He is gracious, merciful, and righteous. It is well with the man who deals generously and lends, who conducts his affairs with justice. For the righteous will never be moved. He will be remembered forever. He is not afraid of bad news. His heart is firm, trusting in the Lord. His heart is steady. He will not be afraid until he looks in triumph on his adversaries. He has distributed freely. He has given to the poor. His righteousness endures forever. His horn is exalted in honor. The wicked man sees it and is angry. He gnashes his teeth and melts away. The desire of the wicked will perish. Let's pray. Holy God, we need you this day and every day. Lord, without you, we have no strength, we have no hope, we have no ability, Lord, to carry on. And so, Lord, I pray that uh, the proceedings of uh, these uh, next few moments would honor you, Lord, would be for your glory and for your name, Lord, for the officials gathered here, for the representatives gathered here, for the citizens gathered here, Lord, I pray that your will would be done here on earth as it is in heaven. And Lord, that there would be today, Lord, a spirit of humility among these men and women, that by your power, Holy Spirit, that you would allow us to be quick to listen, slow to speak and slow to anger, or that we would desire to show love to one another, the kind of love that you've shown us through the gift of your son, Jesus Christ, self-sacrificial love. So that's what we need most today, is to share with one another the love and humility that you've shown us. Help us, Lord, we ask in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. Amen. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Honor the Texas flag. I pledge allegiance to the Texas, one state under God, one and indivisible. Okay. Mr. Manius. Thank you, Honor Members of the Court. We have um, announcements today. First of all, for those of you who entered the front part of this building, you see that there are a lot of blue and white flags and uh, tents being put up. Uh, today is Employee Recognition Day, and um, that, those events will start around 11, 11.30 with the main program about 12, 12.30 this, this afternoon. Also, I'd like to remind the Court that um, we are not going to have Commissioner's Court meeting on May 29th of this month, May 29th. As it relates to today's agenda, we might go to the county administrator section. Item 8A, 1, 2, and 3 will be taken up after closed session today. Also, item 9A, which is on page 10 of your agenda, is approval of bonds and certificates of self-insurance. Uh, that will also be taken up after closed session today. The members of the court, we have been working, the budget office and our office have been working on, on trying to complete the analysis of two items that are on the criminal, uh, that are on the agenda today under criminal courts, which are items 8D, 1, and 2. We would respectfully ask that we delay action on those for one week 
Board will be able to do that analysis and, and give you a recommendation uh, by next Tuesday. So we're going to ask that we hold those two items also. What were those items again? They were items 8, D, 1, and 2 under criminal courts. And then finally, I have an announcement. We're all pretty proud of the fact, too, that we can announce that the Texas Comptroller's Office has awarded Tarrant County the Debt Obligation Transparency Award. The program recognizes local governments for going above and beyond in their transparency efforts. In order to get this award, government entities must provide clear and meaningful financial information that is easily accessible on their website. The information must not only be posted, but the organization must also provide summaries, visualizations, downloadable data, and other relevant information. Actually, this is the third transparency award that the county has achieved. Over the last year, we've received uh, the Transparency Award for Traditional Finance and also for Procurement Transparency. There's a total of five stars as relates to these transparencies and the county staff is in the process of applying for the remaining two. Those two are public pensions and economic development. We'd like to take this opportunity, the administrator's office would like to take this opportunity to thank uh, the um, IT department, the budget department, and the county auditor's office for their assistance and hard work on this initiative. We could not have accomplished this without uh, the collaborative effort of those three departments, along with members of the administrator's staff, which also include Candace Boutte, Megan South, and Jay Singleton. If the public would like to learn more about our transparency efforts, we would invite them to check out the county's open page, open book page, which is located on the county's website. As we move forward in each of these transparency accomplishments, we'll make sure that we make these announcements to Commissioner's Court. GK, you said the, the first two, I know that we got, it was traditional, was that traditional financing or traditional? <clears throat> traditional finance. And uh, the second one was procurement transparency. And then those, the other two um, that we're looking for, what's the, the time frame that you're kind of shooting for on that? Have they got, because I know when they first started this, there was a time frame in which you had to be working in order to be eligible. Where's Candace? Uh, we're working on it. You need to come up here. You need to come up here. I had actually wanted her to make that presentation today. And she wouldn't do it? No. Well, that's what happens when you don't. You get called for questions. <laughs> We're working on the economic development one. We'd like to have that done by the end of this year, and we're working on the public pension one, which will take probably about the next couple of months. So we'll. So apply. we should have the public pensions by the end of this year? We will apply for it. Sometimes it depends on how long it takes the comptroller's office to review the information, but we'll apply for the other two within this year. Okay. Since our public pensions are part of a state system, that ought to be a slam dunk. Right. One so would we think anticipate so. that we'll, we'll receive that award, the next award. The economic development one, there's a little bit more research we need to do. So we think that will take a little bit more time. But within 2017, we'll have applied for all five awards. You mean 2018? Or 2018, sorry. Time flies when you're having fun. <laughs> right. <laughs> right. We started this process in 2016, so. Would you please uh, be sure and kind of alert the court or bring it up and let us know when we've applied for the public pension as well as for the economic development? Yes, sir. Okay. Thank you. That's good news. Thank you very much. Uh, so I'll look forward to us getting those last two and getting those out of the way. Uh, court members, you have before you the minutes of our regular meeting of April the 17th. Move approval. Second. We have a motion to second. Any discussion? Please vote. Motion passes unanimously. Um, at this time, we're going to move into our proclamations and resolutions. And I'm going to call on Susan Sodek, our Communities Resource Coordinator, to, uh, to talk a little bit about that first one. Good morning, Jed. Good morning. Good morning.
morning, Commissioners. Um, as Mr. Mania said, this is a great day to be a Tarrant County employee. We have a lot going on. We have employee recognition over in 504C, and we're setting up downstairs for the 30th Annual Employee Appreciation Day. And um, right now, we get to announce and celebrate our 2017 United Way campaign. So we do have some special guests with us from United Way, and I'd like to welcome them to the court today. Um, first of all, we have T.D. Smyers, the president and CEO of United Way of Tarrant County. Stand up. We have Leah King, who is the senior vice president and chief development officer for United Way of Tarrant County. Faye Ballou, who is also a Senior Vice President of Community Investment and our United Way rep is with us. This year we had a theme and we called it Make a Difference and um, we had several posters and flyers posted throughout the county that featured real Tarrant County employees. You guys are going to recognize several people up on our slide today. Um, they were gracious enough to volunteer to have their picture made and we also kind of took a poll and asked several um, Tarrant County employees what they did to make a difference here at the workplace. And we had some fabulous responses. Um, several of our employees said that they really enjoyed giving through United Way. Number one, because of the diversity of the programs that they, they work with, that they can help women, children, families, and senior citizens all with one single payroll deduction, and that they felt like they, they could really impact our community. Um, we had other responses like um, our, our employees really like working with our, our Oakhurst Elementary kids um, through the Pen Pal program. Um, we also had collective responses to where groups and departments got together and worked with the food drive and through the Salvation Army Angel Tree where they pulled the resources together to give back to the community in that aspect. Um, the one thing that we did find throughout all of this is that the common thread is that we have very, very generous and giving employees who not only support many programs in um, Tarrant County, they also support um, monetarily as well as with their time and talent. So um, that was a great, that was great feedback um, after kind of doing this exercise with our campaign. So the big deal today though is about our wards and where we stand up with our departments and of course the, the court. So we're gonna find out how we made a difference today. This year for the 2017 Tarrant County Government United Way campaign, we raised a total amount of $79,624.92. And that equals out to $19.47 per capita. And I would like to say that that is 47 cents more in our per capita than last year. So, yay, we did, we did good. Okay. So I know y'all are waiting, but we have something special that we did also with the campaign this year. And before we give out the awards, um, Tarrant County's Credit Union has sponsored five $50 gift cards that we are giving to five randomly selected Tarrant County employees who gave to the United Way campaign through payroll dedu deduction. And we would like to invite Melissa Burleson up here and we are going to acknowledge those winners today. And if they would come up, Melissa's gonna hand them their gift card and I'm gonna call out their names. I know a couple of them couldn't make it this morning, but I think we have about three or four that are here. Um, the first gift card winner is Virginia Garcia with DRO. The second gift card winner is Michelle Carter with the District Clerk's Office. Our third gift card winner, and I apologize, I hope I, I with your name, Dominique Christian. Please tell me I said that right. Did I say that okay? Oh, thank you. Okay. Good. Don't then, tell her that. Tell her she messed it up. <laughs> Matthew Weaver with the auditor's office. And then Teresa Parsons with Precinct 3. So congratulations. And then, so now I know we are waiting on the department awards and I'm gonna get Tina Valdez to come up and help us pass those out. This year, 
We are honoring the top three departments in three categories, and this excludes the court. Um, you guys have your own award, but um, we are looking at increase over last year, total dollars raised, and per capita giving. And for each of these departments, they too are getting a gift card from Tarrant County's Credit Union for um, their outstanding efforts on the campaign. So this year, um, our first award we're gonna go with increase over last year. In third place is information technology and they did 116% over their goal last year. In second place, it goes to community development at 360% over goal. And then this one makes me really proud. The first place winner and in increase over last year goes to facilities management with 1,521% over goal. Um, I just have to share that. Yay, Frank, team. I know. Yeah. Good. Frank came into my office and he basically said, I don't care what category, I'm winning. I'm winning. <laughs> How come she only has to flash it once? She's a rookie and you hadn't trained her well that's, enough yet? That's it. We're going to work on that. <laughs> so congratulations to all those that, did that improved their increase over last year. So this, the next category is total dollars raised. And our third place winner is um, public health. And they did $4,632,000. Or did I say four? I said four thousand. No, I mean four thousand six hundred thirty-two dollars. Look, we got your jest. We were thinking if they if they raised four hundred, yeah, forty-six hundred and thirty-two. Thank you. <laughs> glasses on so this is the, the trouble with numbers and it's been a long morning already so <laughs> our second place winner goes to the district clerk and they did five thousand five hundred dollars yes. yet to be determined. <laughs> you can borrow, well, we'll have Catherine email you. Anybody got a kid in here? And our first place winner in total, total dollars raised is the county auditor's office at $7,224.00. <laughs> All right, Craig. <laughs> Our next category is per capita giving, and in third place is housing, and they did $137.63 for their per capita. Y'all come on down. I 
Now this next one was pretty close to being first. I know, this was the, the second and first place are really tight right here. But in second place is community development. I just would like to point out they actually won two awards. Um, their per capita giving this year is $171.54. So congratulations. And in our final first place for per capita giving is the county administrator's office at $171.96. just going to point this out that had somebody in community development given an extra ten dollars y'all probably would be on second place level so y'all y'all really need to up your game next year turn around, turn around and get your picture taken then you then you can talk to us thank y'all very very much we appreciate you so congratulations to all of our departments on the great job they did for this year's United Way campaign. So I know we're waiting on this next category. This is this is the big one right here. And um, like I just would like to say, like I said last year, I'm the messenger. So there it is right there, our Commissioner's Court Awards for per capita giving. So this year in fourth, fourth place is Commissioner Brooks with Precinct 1 at a $583 per capita giving. And in third place is Commissioner Johnson with Precinct 4 at $945.51 per capita giving. And in second place is Commissioner Fickus with Precinct 3, and he did $1,482.01 in per capita giving. And then in first place is the county judge, Glenn Whitley, at $1,570.50. I just like to point out that this is a CPA's way of getting around who raised the most money. Be careful. Be careful. Well, I'll suck in that statement. We might have to go back and look at who raised the most in is that what you're saying because we didn't include your garages i'm saying because the campaign is about raising dollars not about ca per capita giving and there's no mention here about how much money we actually raised we raised That's 70 you didn't raise the most <laughs> <laughs> it's all for a worthy call <laughs> You just really don't want to argue with a CPA about numbers because if you take my numbers and you multiply that by the number of people, I would have also raised the largest department total. Okay. And my, I don't, I'm not going to one, swear one to this. I cannot prove that without access to the numbers. Where are they? They're on my computer. Uh, <laughs> moving right along. No, there it uh, page two will appear shortly. <laughs> Transparency. <and all. laughs> now, the, go right ahead. Go right ahead. Okay. Yeah, you, you can go ahead and interrupt this part, and then we'll get back to the other part okay. before we leave. I do have one more item, that, and this is for you, Judge Whitley, and the Commissioner's Court. Um, this is a thank you, because as I mentioned earlier, that our theme this year was Make a Difference. And um, just on behalf of the employees here at Tarrant County, I just want to say thank you guys so much for supporting us and all the causes that we work with throughout the course of the year. Not only the United Way campaign, but the food drive, the toiletry drive, Salvation Army, 
our blood drives. You guys are so supportive of us, us as employees that we're able to give back um, to the citizens of Tarrant County. So this is just a coffee mug that says make a difference on it. So when you get up in the morning and you have your morning coffee, you know that all of us here at Tarrant County are really making a difference for the people that live here. So thank you very much. Now, I do want to call uh, and ask TD to come forward and, along with uh, uh, whoever else he would like to bring forward. Come on, Faye. Oh, you, Faye's going to take pictures. No, no. Good morning. Welcome. Good morning. We're uh, glad we had another good campaign, and I uh, appreciate you being here today. To I noticed that there's someone uh, noticeably missing but I will let you go ahead and explain that. <laughs> or no, you don't have to explain it. Just tell us the results and we'll know why she's Love missing. Love that softball at me, Judge. Thank you. Well, well, Judge and Commissioners, thank you very much for your support. I am uh, I'm, I'm thrilled. I was thrilled and excited to listen to those presentations and to see everybody coming up forward. You know, it's uh, the community vision, as we express it at United Way, is thriving communities, welcoming neighborhoods, and a strong economy across Tarrant County because we think a rising tide floats all boats. And to see that Especially happen. Especially a Navy guy thinks that. Yeah, I had to throw that in there. But to see that happen, uh, it's team ball. And uh, we really, on a day like today where we're celebrating the employees of, uh, of the county, um, I'm privileged to be here to also express my appreciation for your support and your faith in us to execute that on behalf of the community. Now, Judge, uh, in addition to the Cheshire Cat grin that you got to sport up there <laughs> as you were winning the, uh, the overall giving, I'm sure what you're referring to is the annual competition between uh, the county and the city. And uh, I'm going to go ahead and make the announcement now that once again, the trophy goes to Tarrant County. <laughs> No, there's no math to it this year. I mean, on a per capita basis, last year we were within about three cents of one another. Yes, sir. And this year, I think we beat them by close to six dollars. It was a broader margin, Judge. So, so uh, but great land, and we will look for that opportunity to get both you and the mayor together so we can get that picture that I know you love to get. I don't, I know, but she's running. She's, you know, I'm having a hard time catching her. So, but anyway, on behalf of all my colleagues, I just want to say thank you for your leadership and thanks to the entire team for your support. Well, I want to thank you all again for everything that you do and for your flexibility. I know that you all have, you do a lot of different things. Uh, and one of the things that you have really shown this past year is the flexibility you've gone in. I mean, you helped move folks out of an apartment complex that, that uh, in almost, you know, record speed time. Uh, and you continue, I know you're working with Councilman uh, Bird over on the Las Vegas Trail area. Uh, and so again, you're, you're remaining open to doing things that um, maybe have not historically been uh, where the United Way would have, would have been able to do on a moment's notice. And so we appreciate very, very much uh, your involvement with that. So thank you very much. Thank you, Judge. And I do want to tell all of the employees, all of the departments, how much I appreciate your involvement, your participation. We have fun with this, um, and but but when it comes all down to it, uh, you give of dollars that you work hard to earn, and we appreciate that very much. And in addition, just to the United Way. You also volunteer your time. and You go second mile giving in a lot of different ways. You heard Oakhurst mention, I know we do a great deal on Meals on Wheels. Um, I'm, I'm hopeful that this year um, we're going to uh, kind of reinstitute and reinvigorate the uh, Heart Walk. And I know that last year Commissioner Brooks had a number of folks from his area and uh, we got kind of a late start on that. but. I hopefully uh, we'll put together a, a good sized team for the Heart Walk this year and participate in that. So uh, again, I can't thank you enough for everything you do that is above and beyond what uh, your responsibilities are as, a, as employees. Uh, I know from the people I talk with and from what you tell me as I call and talk with you, 
uh, that the public recognizes that, that you go well above and beyond on the job. But I think as we look out, we also know that y'all go well above and beyond um, as second mile, as uh, second mile giving and well outside of uh, the work hours, whether it be on the weekends, whether it be in the evenings, whatever it may be. So I just can't tell you how proud I am to be uh, associated with Tarrant County and with everything that you do. So with that, I will make a motion that we receive and file the uh, uh, Tarrant County recognition for United Way. We've got a motion and a second. Please vote. Motion passes unanimously. Um, next, we have a uh, the National Day of Prayer uh, proclamation or resolution, and so I'll read that into the record, and I believe... I can find Vicki. Vicki Phillips, come on down. Good morning. Good morning. Hey, Vicki. Hi, how are you? <laughs> okay. Uh, whereas in 1775, Continental Congress proclaimed a national day of prayer, which was designated a time for prayer in forming a new nation. They stated faith and prayer were fundamental in the formation of our nation, giving strength, wisdom, and peace to mankind. And whereas on March 30th, 1863, President Abraham Lincoln signed a con congressional resolution calling for a day of fasting and prayer during the Civil War, and whereas in 1952, President Harry Truman signed a joint resolution which had passed unanimously by both houses of Congress establishing an official day of prayer. And whereas on May the 5th, 1988, President Ronald Reagan designated the first Thursday in May as the annual national day of prayer in which he stated that that lesson is clear, that in winning of freedom and in the living of life, the first step is prayer. And whereas in April, 2011, the U.S. Court of Appeals Seventh Circuit upheld the 1952 Congressional Act proclaiming that the annual National Day of Prayer to be observed nationwide, and whereas the 67th Annual National Day of Prayer theme is Pray for American Unity, and the theme scripture is Ephesians 4.3, making every effort to keep the unity of spirit through the bond of peace, and whereas we humble ourselves in prayer, lift our voices with one heart and one mind to seek God's face, repent, turn from our ways and pray. God hear our prayers, heal our land, bring unity and peace, strengthen us, protect us, give us your wisdom, counsel and understanding and instruct and bring unity among our leaders for the good of the people of this nation. Now therefore be it resolved that we the commissioner's court of Tarrant County do hereby recognize Thursday, May the 3rd, 2018, as the 67th Annual National Day of Prayer in Tarrant County. In witness whereof, we have herein to set our hands and cause the seal of Tarrant County to be affixed this first day of May, 2018. I will move its approval. Second. We have a motion to second. Please vote. The motion passes unanimous. Commissioner Wynn, go ahead and get your unanimously. Uh, and with that, I will Commissioner Whitley, Judge Johnson, uh, 
Andy Wynn and Roy Brooks. I just want to thank you so much for sponsoring uh, this National Day of Prayer proclamation in Tarrant County and decreeing over our whole county that we do as Tarrant County citizens want to, to have a National Day of Prayer where we come together in unity and pray. Because we know that prayer is going to be our only answer to bring us together. When we all look back to the scripture, and we look back to the Bible and God's plumb line, if we all all go there, then we will have the unity that we're seeking, you know, amongst our community. And so um, I just thank you for that. I want to invite all of you. Uh, I know you've got so many things to do, but uh, Commissioner Brooks, we just want to thank you for coming uh, several years and inspiring us uh, by coming to the National Day of Prayer and speaking to the community. Uh, and uh, we just want to invite you to, this year it's going to be at St. Andrew's Episcopal Church. Uh, because the weather's not cooperating with us tomorrow. <laughs> and so I have the job of moving the train of elephants from the park over to the church. <laughs> but there will be, uh, the, the community will come together, rain or sunshine. We have uh, shuttles from the Burnett Plaza taking people over there. So please don't let the rain discourage you. Come out as a community and pray because when we come together, the Bible tells us when two or more of us gather together in his name, he will be in the midst of us. And so that's a powerful promise that we have. Two powerful promises to let go and not participate. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, Commissioner Johnson, I believe you have a resolution. Uh, yes, Your Honor. This is for ratification only. This resolution was presented to the chief on his retirement. We have a motion to second. Please vote. Motion passes unanimously. Okay. Uh, now comes again one of my favorite times of, uh, uh, of the month, and that's the opportunity to recognize our employees who are celebrating their anniversaries uh, with our county. Um, as I will say again, we've, for you five-year rookies, um, it's important that you hear this. If it sounds like your name, stand up. <laughs> if it happens to be in the same area alphabetically where your name should be, stand up. And then that way you won't embarrass me any more than what these individuals up here will have already embarrassed me uh, by laughing and by going through that process. So I know you're encouraging me, but it's, it's those snickers when you look down the list and you see the names that are coming forward and you begin snickering before I get there that, that sometimes make me wonder a little bit. Uh, so we're going to start out with the five-year employees. I will call your name, stand up, remain standing until we get finished with all that particular group, and then we'll recognize you and you can, and you can sit down at that point in time. So we're going to start off with uh, five years. It's uh, Jason Archibald with the Sheriff's Department. Melissa Askey, Auditor's Office. Melissa. Juan Bald Baldermos, Jr., Facilities Management. Brock Barnett, Sheriff's Department. Tiffany Blackman Cop Kleins, Criminal District Attorney's Office. Larry Cox, Sheriff's Department. Judge Mary Tom Cornett, JP, Precinct 2. Kevin Fletcher, Sheriff's Department. Robert Floyd, Jr., Sheriff's Department. Jeannie Job, Criminal District Court Number 4. Deborah McLeod, Public Health. Jonathan Mullins, Sheriff's Department. Brian Nar Naranjo, did I know I missed that one up. Poor, is he here? He's not even here. Closer than you think. Christopher Nettles, Justice of the Peace, Precinct 8. Chris. Isaac Norman, Sheriff's Department. Diana Pascu, Sheriff's Department. Paul Patterson, Facilities Management. Jody Ragsdall, Sheriff's Department. Alcala Reynolds, Sheriff's Department. 
Scott Shelby, Facilities Management. Tammy Shepard, Tax Office. Trevor Siegel, Sigler, Sheriff's Department. Christina Sims, Criminal District Attorney's Office. Cody Spigler, Sheriff's Department. Anson Tang, Sheriff's Department. Christopher White, Medical Examiner's Office. And Jimmy Wright, Sheriff's Department. Let's give these five year employees a hand. Thank you all very much. Now for our 10 year employees Ray Barrow or Barrow, Information Technologies, Lisa Carlton, District Clerk's Office, Preston Cunningham, Sheriff's Department. Christopher Edelman, Sheriff's Department. Billy Hahn, District Clerk's Office. Sierra Hernandez, Tax Office. Terrence Nobles, Public Health. Michael Obeldahl, Sheriff's Department. Veronica Sayani. Juvenile Services, close, no, she here? You know, these people whose names are hard to pronounce, they either need to call me and tell me they're not going to be here so I don't embarrass myself <laughs> or come and let me embarrass myself. Thomas Sanders, Constable Precinct 1, there he is. Elvira Simpson, Tax Office. Tracy Schrader. Information Technology, Sarah Van Tassel, Facilities Management, and these are our 10-year employees. Let's give them a hand. Now for our 15-year employees, Christina Chavez, Sheriff's Department. Janice Daniels, Criminal District Attorney's Office. Virginia Garcia, Domestic Relations Office. Keeman Malone, Constable Precinct 3. Mark Porter, Criminal District Attorney's Office. And Mark Thillman, Criminal Court Magistrate's Office. These are our 15-year employees. Twenty-year employees: Cloris Gray, Sheriff's Department; Robert Hooks, Sheriff's Department; Eddie Price Jr., Juvenile Services; Dick Wren, Information Technology; Deborah Ralston, Public Health. And Rodney White, Public Health. Let's give them a round of applause. <laughs> now for our 25-year employees, we're going to start off with uh, Lisa Anderson in the tax office for 25 years. There's Lisa. Uh, started in the tax office as a temp, uh, moved over to property tax. Um, was in that area and has been there for a long time. She started off in collections and as she said, she's really been all over the area, uh, all over the different departments, different areas, and she's now in the refund area. Um, she's seen a lot of changes, uh, especially in the types of uh, permits and payments that she's had. Um, when she started, she said our account numbers were five to six digits long, and now they're 11 digits. Uh, so it just goes to show you what's happened and in, in as far as the increase there. Uh, we all have our different programs. We all just love the fact that we have all these different passwords. She says, when I started, it was one password to log in. She says, now 
it's 15 or 16 different passwords to log in to the various and sundry different programs that she has. I uh, feel you. I don't know. <laughs> don't say that. Don't say that. <laughs> IT, don't get her. And now you've got to run and get out of here before IT finds you. You keep it on your body, right? You tattoo it someplace. Very safe place. Very safe. Yeah, I understand. We'll talk about that more in weeks to come. Um, when I asked her what she liked most about working for the county, she said, you know, my dad was in the Air Force, and uh, so she felt like, okay, that, that was serving her country, serving the, serving the public, and she felt like that by working with the county, uh, that it kind of gave her that same feeling of serving the public. And I thought that was a unique way of, of thinking through that. We are so influenced by our parents, I think many times more visually than verbally. And as a parent, I would certainly think that because I know they never listen to anything I said. Uh, but oftentimes it's amazing how closely we'll tag or follow what one of our parents does. And many times it may be, uh, you know, I think it's visual versus verbal. Uh, she said, I love the work ethic, the people and the coworkers that she has. Um, she said, quite honestly, I enjoy the regular work hours. Uh, you know, it's, it's, a, it's a routine, it's a regimen. She says, and I enjoy very much the benefits. Um, said she's been here 25 years. She hopes that she makes it over 30. Um, she said, you know, after I had been at the county for just a little while, uh, I was volunteering down at CASA, and I met this lady, uh, and we became just fantastic friends. And her name was Grace. And everybody says and does just that because everybody knows that we're talking about Judge Vandergris, secretary for many years and mine when I first became judge. And what a fantastic lady she is uh, and one that is constantly looking for ways to volunteer and to help her community, whether it be Arlington, whether it be Fort Worth, whether it be any place within Tarrant County. And so she said, I stuck, I struck up a friendship with Grace that still exists today. Uh, so it's just one of those things where you make friends and family members almost uh, within Tarrant County. Lisa, we thank you very much for the 25 years of service you've given us. Now, next on our list is John Arter. He is a deputy constable in Precinct 1, but he was not going to be able to make it today. So if you see John, thank him for his 25 years of service. Uh, next is uh, Kelly Belouz, uh, Sheriff's Office, Court Security. There she is right back there. Started off uh, in the Sheriff's Office in the Correction Center, uh, then went to jail school, and uh, she was the she was the only weapons certified person in central reception and that's where people come in so you know she was the one that had the gun um somebody down there you always need somebody in that area with the gun and she was the individual she's worked on the floors uh she's been in security control and that's uh if you've ever entered or gone in on it well i won't say if you've ever entered the jail let's just say if you've ever gone on a tour of the jail hopefully uh you know that you go in and you get into the elevator and someone has has to buzz you to move the elevator a lot of times and pushes the door sh or make sure the door shut behind you and do a lot of those types of things calls all the codes does all of that she was in the security control area uh, for uh, for several years then went to uh, the peace officer school and she's now working court security at the Miller in the probation area uh, when I asked her what she liked most, she said, I have really enjoyed the time when I was in the juvenile area and was a bailiff uh, for Judge Brown. And she said, you know, it's, it's, it's a big difference between adult and juvenile. But she also said at the same time, it was amazing to see some of the juveniles and, and some of the severity of the crimes that they were uh, had committed or were a part of. So um, she said it was just a kind of an eye-opening difference. When I asked her what she liked most, um, she said, I really have enjoyed the work. It's been very rewarding. She says, I love people. She said, now there are times when the public can be just a little challenging. Mm -hmm. And I think we can all relate to that too. Uh, when I asked her if she um, 
ever expected to be here for 25 years. She said, you know, when I first started working here, she says, I, I wondered if I would ever get to the vesting part of it. And, and so, and I see heads shaking around the room. So it, you know, it's one of those things where you come and then all of a sudden you just kind of fall in love with the place. You fall in love with the people and with the opportunity to serve the public. Um, and Kelly, we appreciate very, very much the 25 years of service you've given us. Thank you. Next is Abel O. Where's Abel O? 25 years with the Sheriff's Office. Uh, he said, everybody will know me if you call me Abel O, and that worked out real easy. Um, started in the Sheriff's Office at the Bond Desk, uh, has worked all over the jail, uh, is now working in the Correction Center, I believe you said. Um, his most memorable moment was when, I guess, the contract you know, for several years, all Fort Worth brought all of their prisoners to uh, our jail. And when that contract ended, he said that was uh, something that he remembered. He says, I love working for the county. Uh, I've made lifelong friends. He said, has, uh, the county has great benefits. He said, just overall, the county really cares about its people and really takes care of its folks. Uh, when I asked him about it, if there was anything else, uh, he's got a daughter who is pers pursuing a country music career and is about to put out her first album, I believe you said, and his son is uh, starting shortstop as a freshman for TCU. Well, was drafted by the Twins, but decided to go ahead and go to TCU. So uh, there was a lot of pride in talking about both his kids. Uh, Abel, we appreciate very, very much the 25 years of service you've given to Tarrant County. <laughs> Next is uh, Dana Quintana. Court security, 25, actually 26 years. Now, okay, is she here? Well, when you see her, Tell her congratulations uh, and thank her for her 25 years of service, uh, or 20, it's actually 26 years. I think she worked a little bit as a temp. Um, I'm trying to remember exactly why it was is that she, but she's got 26 years of service. For whatever reason we figured out, we'll work on. Next is 30 years of service, Tim Pickle. Tim, where are you? There he is. Uh, started out in the uh, kitchen in the jail, um, then got his peace officer's uh, license, made it to sergeant in 93. He helped start SWAT in 1995 and served on the SWAT team for 23 years. Just recently, I believe, uh, he uh, retired from that. He's moved to warrants extradition in 96. Uh, he's now working court security on the south door in the Curry building. When I asked him about his memorable moments, now this was, um, this was about 10 years ago, but he said, when I was on warrants, one day I found the person we were looking for, and this uh, lady was about five foot five. She weighed about 220 pounds, and he found her in the clothes dryer. <laughs> Now, I don't know if he got her out of it or not, but, but he found her in the clothes dryer. Um, when I asked him what he liked, you know, there are, some people will tell these stories. I, you know, I, I'm going to have to start coaxing a little bit more. They used to tell me a lot of stories, and then they stopped when I started repeating them. Uh, but we're going to have to get back to that. Maybe we'll have to. Maybe I'll just tell the stories and not associate it with anybody, and then y'all can pick who you feel like told me that story. Um, what he liked most was, again, the benefits, the retirement opportunities. He said, you know, Tarrant County is just absolutely a great place to work. Um, he had a son that was in the Navy, um, and when he got out of the Navy, Tim had an opportunity to, he was coming back from the Persian Gulf, and Tim had an opportunity to go and meet him in Hawaii and then uh, basically ride back on the carrier to L.A. Um, Five years ago when we talked, uh, he was just moving over to the training division. His son was still in the Navy, a firefighter in the Navy. Uh, he had a new grandson that was about three weeks old and one that was five. Uh, and his daughter had married um, 
a, a gentleman that was in the army and was about to be deployed to Iraq five years forward. Um, he too never thought he would be here this long. He said, I've had two jobs in basically 34 years, one with the Air Force and one with the county. Uh, his son has retired from the Navy, but is now working in El Paso as a firefighter at Fort Bliss. Um, and then his daughter is working as an EMT right now for AMR, which is a, a company similar to, to like MedStar. Um, her husband is actually working for the county in South Patrol. And he now has three grandsons, and he's got another one that's on the way and will be uh, born here before too long. So, um, Tim, we want to thank you very, very much for your 30 years of service to Tarrant County. Next is Julia Saputo with the county clerk's office, 30 years. There she is. Uh, started out in the criminal area of the county clerk, uh, inputting uh, traffic cases. Uh, takes care of court costs and fines now. What she liked most was the caring, was such a caring group of people. Um, she said they will help you with whatever your need may be. Um, and she just, she can't say enough about that. Um, she was, she's, when I, th this was now <coughs> 10 years ago. She had four kids at that point in time that were 32, 24, 22, and 12. Flash forward five years, she has four grandbabies. She says she loves them, she can spoil them and send them back, and I can relate to that. Uh, that she's had, again, some, a great opportunity to work with some great folks. Flash forward another five years. Now she has seven grandbabies. Um, she hopes to be here a whole lot longer. But one of the things she related, she says, you know, I'm gonna just tell you, I had a rough childhood when I was growing up. And she said, when I came to the county, it had a profound effect on my life. The people that I, that I worked for and I worked with really showed me what life was about and how it could be. And uh, she said, Tarrant County has made the biggest difference in her life that she could have ever hoped for. Um, Julia, we appreciate very, very much the 30 years of service you've given to Tarrant County. Thank you. Next is Lisa Woodard, Precinct 8, JP, 30 years of service. Started out in the Sheriff's Department, uh, then went over to probation for about a year to work in probation. Just, yeah, wanted to make sure we were clear here. <coughs> then she moved out to the JP's office and she really found the home there and loved being out there was the court manager and then in 2010 was elected the justice of the peace in, in that particular in precinct 8 uh, when I asked her about memorable moments she, she related to Judge Vandergriff and his retirement she said that man has done so much not only for um, Arlington but for all of Tarrant County she said I just absolutely love working for the county the benefits that we have um, she said I never thought I'd be here this long um, she said, I'm absolutely loving uh, my job. Uh, she had a, uh, uh, five years ago, she had a four-year-old granddaughter. Flash forward, she just won re-election. She has added four more grandkids. Uh, one of, I think one of her, one of, did one of your children just get married or am I just dreaming now? About a couple of years ago. A couple of years ago. She said, I have been so grateful to have had an opportunity to work for Tarrant County this 30 years. Lisa, we're grateful that you've been with Tarrant County for this, for this long period of time. Thank you very much. <laughs> Judge Brent Carr, 
35 years. Started in the DA's office, probably started as one of the baby misdemeanor attorneys. Um, was elected judge in 1991. When I asked him about memorable moments, it was the opportunity to have worked with Chris Marshall. Uh, I knew Chris through Rotary. Uh, it was a tremendous loss when we lost Chris. Um, he said, what I like most, he said, every day is a great day. He said, I have raised my family with the county. Uh, the atmosphere is great, sense of accomplishment. Um, he said the, the county way is to solve problems. Uh, he said, I was thankful to Tim Curry for giving me a job. It was a great place to work. Um, you know, he plays it. He's played for years and years and years at our Employee Appreciation Day. Uh, but he's one of those who always goes above and beyond. I'm going to say that again. Uh, he is a Marine, retired Marine, um, and he started the Veterans Court because he felt like there was something else we could be doing. He started the Mental Health Court because he felt like there was something else we could be doing for these people. Um, he never just stops when the, when the 5 o'clock bell rings. He's always there to do the extra mile to find a way to help someone get back on track if they've gotten off track or to stay on track uh, if, they're, if they're doing well. Um, his daughter now works for the county, so the tradition continues. Uh, he has sons. Both of his sons have been in combat zones, and both of them have returned home safely. Um, he said, I couldn't imagine working at a better place than Tarrant County. Well, I'm going to tell you, this county would not be the place it is without what you have done for the county as well as for the people in the county. And we can't thank you enough for the 35 years of service that you've given to this county. Thank you, thank you, thank you. <laughs> someone to mentor. For those of y'all who weren't recognized today, look around for those that were because every one of those individuals are someone to mentor uh, or to look to as a mentor. Um, you know, we, we say it and, and I want you to know we're as genuine as we can be when we say it. This place would not be the place that it is with, were it not for you uh, and for what you do in everything uh, in every way you come in contact with the public. Uh, we thank you very, very much, and we appreciate you very, very much. We have refreshments back in 504C. Um, well, I got all my stuff spread out. You, you come in late, I'm going to spread out all over your place. <laughs> so that's what happens when you... That's your, yeah, that, oh, yeah, that's the one that says that my six people raised more money than all of your garage people put together. You do all that funky math. No, nah, don't be. This ain't not funky math. This is facts. These aren't yeah. fake facts. These are facts. Yeah. And so with that, 504C, thank you all very much for everything you do for us. No, oh, it's here, right here. This is, this is the right yeah, one.
I'd like to make a motion that we receive and file employee recognition. Second. We have a motion to second. Any discussion? Please vote. Motion passes unanimously. Mr. May, um, you have before you the consent agenda. Move for the approval of the consent agenda with, with one comment. Uh, that is an item on uh, the, uh, is it the IT department? They talk about the performance of the IT department in the past years and all the achievements. Yes. Uh, I read through it and uh, usually we tend to perceive these kind of report as uh, fluff. Um, in my experience, IT performance and achievements have been um, overlooked because these are complex matters and they're intangible. You can't see them, you can't touch them. So I would encourage uh, folks in this great Tam County family to review some of those achievements. And uh, as we move on in our daily operation, take a moment to thank an IT geek <laughs> for their help and support. So uh, I would, that's the comment I'd like to make. Thank you. Thank we, you to all the IT geeks. We have a motion, we don't have a second. Here. We need a second. No, okay. We have a motion to second. Please vote. Motion passes unanimously. Mr. Manius. Thank you, Your Honor. Members of the Court, we go to item four under the administrator session. We're requesting that the court approve a retainer agreement engaging the law firm of Martinez as outside counsel with regard to the employment matters filed by Luckett and Johnson. Move for approval. Second. We have a motion to second. Any discussion? Please vote. Motion passes unanimously. Thank you. <coughs> Craig, Mr. Maxwell. Good morning, Judge, Commissioners. I have two items for your consideration today. The first item is to ask you receive and file the Tarrant County financial statements for February 2018. Approval. Second. We have a motion to second. Any discussion? Please vote. Motion passes unanimously. The second item is uh, approval of the release of depository collateral. Move approval. Second. We have a motion to second. Any discussion? <coughs> Please vote. Motion passes unanimously. Thank you. Ms. Snyder. Management Board is recommending the payment of two claims, one to David Pruden and the other to the City of Dow Worthington Gardens. Move for approval. Second. We have a motion, second. Any discussion? Please vote. Motion passes unanimously. Ms. Glenn. Move to receive and file the personnel agenda. Second. We have a motion, a second to receive and file the personnel agenda. Any discussion? Please vote. Motion passes unanimously. Thank you and good morning. Good morning. Good morning. We have two additional items. The second item, if I don't sneeze, uh, we're asking the court to approve <coughs> a waiver of terminal benefits for the criminal district attorney's office. The criminal district attorney is requesting a waiver, excuse me, of 368 vacation hours effective May 7th. Uh, the net savings, if approved to the general fund, will be approximately $4,700, including fringe benefits. Move approval. Second. We have a motion to second. Any discussion? Please vote. Motion passes unanimously. Our third item, uh, we're asking the court to approve the United Healthcare uh, Insurance Company Stop Loss Policy Amendment Number 7. This amendment uh, primarily reflects the 2018 um, rates, which were approved by the court last year. Just as a reminder, the 2018 rates increased 9% over 2017 rates. We're estimating the fiscal impact for stop loss for 2018 will be approximately $1.3 million. Move approval. Second. We have a motion to second. <laughs> was that in the budget? That was. Well, just twice. Absolutely wanted to be sure. Please vote. Motion passes unanimously. Thank you. Vinny. 
morning, Your Honor. Good morning. Good morning. Public Andy. health has uh, one item uh, before you for uh, consideration this morning. Uh, we're requesting an approval to submit a letter of collaboration between Tarrant County Public Health, Texas A&M University, and Colorado School of Public Health for a research study on mosquito control within Tarrant County. The subject matter is social feasibility and the economic cost benefit analysis of all the vector control stuff that we've been doing since 2012. Move approval. Second. We have a motion to second. Any discussion? Please vote. Motion passes unanimously. Thank you. Thank I you. Look forward to the results of that study. Yes. Mr. Beecham. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Uh, Your Honor, other members of the court, we have five items for your consideration this morning. Our first item is a bid award recommendation for bid 2018-061, bid for erosion control for Lido Road and Walnut Creek, recommendation be toward the low bidder C Green Scaping, the amount of $125,016. If approved, we're also seeking contract approval from the court, acceptance of both the payment <coughs> and the performance bond. Move for approval. Second. We have a motion to second. Any discussion? Please vote. Motion passes unanimously. Item number two is another bid award recommendation for bid 2018-078. Bid for the Tarrant County Resource Connection Switchboard Replacement. Recommendation be to award to Haynes Humphrey, the amount of $202,766. Again, approved. We're seeking contract approval, acceptance of the payment, and performance bond. Move approval. Second. We have a motion to second. Any discussion? Please vote. Motion passes unanimously. Item number three is an item in regards to RFP 2018-073. It's an RFP for audit management system for our auditor's office. Uh, we are recommending rejection of proposals and uh, seeking permission to reissue with revised specifications. The information that we got just uh, wasn't what they were looking for. Move approval. Second. A motion to second. Any discussion? Please vote. Motion passes unanimously. Item number four, uh, another item in regards to uh, bid 2018-080, uh, uh, which is our annual contract for propane fuel and repair and purchase of uh, propane fueling equipment. We are, again, recommending rejection of the one bid that we got uh, and seeking permission to um, uh, reissue with revised specifications. The price was excessive, uh, as in double. We'd like to try it again. Move approval. Second. We have a motion to second. Any discussion? Please vote. Motion passes unanimously. Last item, item in regards to bid 2018-090. This was a bid for a new contract for fire suppression equipment inspection maintenance repair. Um, we are again seeking uh, uh, permission to reject all bids and uh, reissue with revised specification. This one's on us. Uh, we failed to uh, send the appropriate uh, vendor database to the uh, uh, commodity that it matched. If you don't send them the right folks, you aren't going to get any bids, and we did. So we'd like to try to fix it. Move approval. Second. We motion to second. Any discussion? Please vote. Motion passes unanimously. Thank you. I'm taking by the three pages of stuff that we had on consent that there's going to be a stack of stuff on my desk to sign. It's going to be unbelievable. She's shaking her head like, okay. Happy Tuesday. Yeah, happy Tuesday. It's going to be one of those days. Don't you wish I was absent today? Oh, yeah. <clears throat> uh, Commissioner Wynn, I believe you have an interlocal agreement. Yes, sir. We have an interlocal agreement with the city of Mansfield. Move for the approval of item 8, M, 1, A, and B. Second. We have a motion to second. Any discussion? Please vote. Motion passes unanimously. Commissioner Fickus. Yes, I have an interlocal with the city of North Christian Hills. Item two, A and B. Second. We have a motion to second. Any discussion? Please vote. Motion passes unanimously. Commissioner Johnson. I have an interlocal agreement with the City of Fort Worth. <clears throat> Item eight M three A and B. I move approval. Second. We have a motion to the DA's office. Yeah, we have a motion to second. Any discussion? Please vote. Motion passes unanimously. Are there any appointments today? Next week. Okay. Um, then I would ask for a motion to approve the claims, including the addendum. So moved. Second. We have a motion to second to approve the claims, including the addendum. Any discussion? Please vote. Motion passes unanimously. 
No briefing items? Not this morning, Your Honor. Then we will recess our open meeting, proceed to close to discuss items exempted under Section 551.071, 072, 074, 076, and 087 of the Texas Government Code. Okay. Having returned from our closed session, we'll now address the following matters. Mr. Manius. Thank you, Your Honor. Members of the court, a week ago to the administrator section, take up uh, the first item. We're requesting that the commissioner's court accept a letter of resignation from Judge Russ Casey, JP3. Move for approval. Second. We have a motion to second. Any discussion? Please vote. Motion passes unanimously. <clears throat> we could go to item number two. We're requesting that the commissioner's court approve an appointment order as it relates to Justice of the Peace Precinct 3. And we have the order here. We're Staff is recommending that the appointment be made to William Paul Brandt and that that appointment be effective today, May 1st. Sir, I move approval. Second. We have a motion and a second. For the record, there is no general election appointment in November. That is correct. Thank you. Any further discussion? Please vote. Motion passes unanimously. Congratulations, sir. Congratulations, sir. Welcome, Welcome to the hearing. Thank you. Members of the court, we can go to item number three. We're requesting that the commissioner's court waive the initial waiting period to self-insure for a new appointee to the Office of Justice of Peace, Precinct 3. Move for approval. Second. We have a motion and a second. Any discussion? Please vote. Motion passes unanimously. Members of court, we could now go to the item number nine, room numeral nine, 9A. We have in our possession a certificate of self-insurance by Tarrant County in lieu of bond for William Paul Brandt for the Office of Justice of the Peace, Precinct 3. We ask your approval. Move approval. Second. We have a motion and a second. Any discussion? <clears throat> Please vote. Motion passes unanimously. You'll give me one second. Your Honor, that's all we have at this time. Okay. Um, there being no more, no additional business, we are now adjourned, and we will uh, meet downstairs as quickly as we can. As, as you are sitting there.